I had been praying, and I was alone now in this portion of the trench. And I was praying for some vision of God, if there was a God, to come. And tell me, explain to me why this war was going on. When suddenly, there was a small spark of light. I saw some smoke, and there were little sparkles of light in the smoke, in this pitch darkness. And uh, with that came this running laughter, a very beautiful, buoyant laughter came. And these sparkles started to magnify and become more splendid. And the laughter increased in intensity, but it was very beautiful. And suddenly, I could start to see the face and the hair of a, a beard of a man and the hair of a man spraying out all over, uh, just like a, a full of light. Finite man has ceaselessly been beckoned by the infinite into the eternal kaleidoscope of love and light, from illusion to truth, from darkness to light. But man, yet living on superficial levels, desiring yet to satisfy primeval longings, seeking answers to perennial questions, who am I, where and why? Why India is because it's the only place on this planet where it's possible. I don't, uh, I can't say hardly why uh, I left Christianity and whether I left Christianity. I just one day find myself here as if somebody has attracted me here, as if it is a magnet. What do you find here? Work and Happiness. That you didn't find in France? Not really. What do you mean by that? Um, well, life in France had just led me here. Can you explain that? I was looking for a name. <laughs> There should be somewhere upon earth a place where all human beings of goodwill, sincere in their aspiration, could live freely as citizens of the world, obeying one single authority, that of the supreme truth. For in this ideal place, money would be no more the sovereign law. That is why I call it a dream. I saw the omnipotent flaming pioneers over the heavenly verge which turns towards life Come crowding down the amber stairs of birth, forerunners of a divine multitude. Out of the paths of the morning star they came into the little room of mortal life. So suddenly he smiled and moved his lips. And so I came in closer to get a better look at his lips and he, and he sort of went. So 
I said, Oro. Withdrawing from active political life in answer to an inner call, Sri Aurobindo arrived in Pondicherry in 1910. Here he evolved his message of the supramental transformation of man. Later he was joined by the mother, a French lady with mystic insights, who recognized in Sri Aurobindo the supreme guru of her visions. Together they dreamt of an ideal environment where man could realize his true self and total union through psychological discipline. This being the next stage in the evolution of man. February 28, 1968, a handful of earth from different lands was brought to Auroville. Auroville is UNESCO's hope and faith today because Auroville and UNESCO have the same ideals. The handful of earth from different lands was put into the foundation lotus as a symbol of their dedication to realize the Auroville Charter. Charter d'Auroville. Auroville n'appartient à personne. Auroville belongs to nobody in particular. Auroville belongs to humanity as a whole. But to live in Auroville, one must be a willing servitor of the Divine Consciousness. Thus, the city of Dawn, situated eight kilometers northeast of Pondicherry, came into being. Here is an experiment to combine individual advancement with collective development. What am I searching? I'm trying to find myself. Trying to know who I am. Following the thoughts of the mother in Aurobindo, where we're trying to do a community that isn't so organizational, a sort of a, a non-organization little organization or something. And mother does, somehow, she doesn't, uh, she didn't seem to be insisting on anything, so that I couldn't, I couldn't uh, rebel against it, because she didn't put anything to rebel against. Yet man has remained in bondage. Yet man remains divided from the infinite. So does the answer to the perennial questions involve a total break from the past in order to regain man's basic harmony with nature? Mother tells us that nature is very consciously aspiring for the new consciousness, that the plants are very open to her force, perhaps often even more open than we are, and that through uh, working with the plants and an inner contact with them, we can also contact those higher parts in ourselves. Can we compare this type of life to something he is already existing in the world? Not really. Just to be contented with this past 
but is to transform it, yeah? That means individually to transform oneself according to this one consciousness. Parler d'Auroville, c'est parler d'une ville expérimentale. When the project originally started, our president, the mother, drew a circular design and gave it to us within five minutes. Our chief architect, who is a leading architect in the world, did not accept that design but developed Auroville on a square. And after a year's technical research, he came to the circular design. On the outskirts of Auroville, we have some colonies named Promise, Hope, or Orchard, Aspiration, which is a part of Oro model. Oro model will be a prototype of the life which is to come in Oroville. And yet, they will be different, done from a different consciousness. And world will see what is the real role of every activity. Oroville will put them in their proper places, and world will see how a harmonious life and a progressive life can coexist. We have about 2,000 acres under the project. There are about 300 people working and staying, staying on the project and working on the project. And we are making provision for 50,000 people. The construction of Bharat Nivas the cultural pavilion of India has also started. Here in Oroville, we are staying to develop our consciousness. And when you work and is an offering to the divine and to the community, the consciousness develops best. We don't want to have any relation with anyone on monetary basis. is not easy because when I first heard about Oroville and about the ashram I thought this is a, this is a spiritual community and so on and what I shall do is to sit and meditate and be very peaceful all day and the kind of yoga we're doing here its purpose is to establish truth in all that we think, in every action, and in every part of ourselves. And in order to do that, you have to work the falsehood out of yourself. Man is too weak to bear the infinite's weight. Truth born too soon. Matrimandir wants to be the symbol of the Divine's answer to man's aspiration for perfection. In 1910, 1915, Sherobindo has announced that a new force, which he has called the supramental force, is going to come down in the earth. And this new force, in fact, has manifested in the Earth's atmosphere in 1956. The matrimon deer will be a place where this new force will be gathered, will be concentrated, so that its work will be more effective. And uh, we can tell that it is because of this manifestation embodiment of an actual human unity. In Orwell, whether you have a PhD degree or whether you are a sweeper, basically the idea is uh, the variety of food and the education and medical facilities and so on will be equal to all people concerned. And I think this is what we badly need in this country. The uh, uh, people who think that they can 
secure happiness by uh, and rate it to salary are basically wrong. Are you trying to escape from the realities? Uh, what <laughs> about reality? I think yeah. I'm trying to find the reality. <laughs> There's plenty of reality here. And at every turn you've got this choice between doing something in the right way, in the truthful way, and doing it according to how your ego wants to do it. And uh, one, uh, one of the problems that you as a filmmaker will have in trying to depict the story of Oroville is that the real thing that's happening here is not necessarily so much the building of this building or the building of that building, but the building of me, and the building of him, and the building of him. So that means the whole of the humankind, yeah? From the people who work in the factory to the people who are going to school, from the bureaucrat to the scientist, it involves everybody. And these people are not the, some sort of an elite of, like we could consider in the old way, the best student of a school, yeah? Coming, the best student of their school, coming with the best student of that school, coming together to be all the best together, yeah? The children here which are growing up are entering into a new consciousness, into a new world. Auroville is the first city in all history built for the child in order to reconstruct the man. And what is your name? Philo. Philo? Here, transcending logic into pure experience of inner space, you arrive at perfect realization, the super mind. If that interests you, well, embark. What will happen tomorrow, I do not know. You must leave behind whatever has been designed, whatever has been built up, and then on the march into the unknown, come what may. 
mother.